Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video from me, Alan, from Alan's Inventions. In this video, I will be showing you guys how I made this super simple uh, GPS tracking device. Uh, this is based off the particle boron and the Adafruit Ultimate GPS. Um, I'll have links down below. So anyways, this thing is battery powered. It's got a manual on off switch. Uh, it's USB rechargeable as you can see on the side and then um, it has one LED on top for the status notifications. I'll get more into detail later of how I made it, how I configured it for different conditions that the GPS tracker is in. So anyways, let's get started. This whole project is based around the Particle Boron LTE. This is just like an Arduino microcontroller. However, Particle has made it really easy to interface with their own cloud platform that allows it to receive over the air updates and program it remotely without you having to worry about setting up servers and things like that. Okay, so the first thing I did was of course breadboard this whole thing. And it's really easy to wire this if you want to make your own. It literally took four cables. Uh, from the particle boron to the ultimate GPS module uh, two of those lines were power so both luckily both of these devices run off 3.3 volts and then you have your serial um, communication for transmit and receive so TX on the GPS module goes to RX on the boron and then TX on the boron goes to RX on the uh, GPS module and then 3.3 to 3.3 and then I had initially hooked up two LEDs, uh, but I decided uh, in order to save power, I was just going to use one LED. I used a blue one. It's just what I had on hand and was the brightest. Um, so basically what the LEDs do, is, or LED does, if it has a GPS lock, it will blink for half a second uh, depending on your refresh rate, which can be anywhere from 60 seconds up to 10 minutes. Um, and all you do is you change a delay in the code. Um, and then if it doesn't have a signal lock, it will basically stay on all the time until it finds a lock. As you can see here, the LED is just solid red. Uh, that just basically means it's not finding uh, enough satellites to be able to connect to it to establish a correct position. So it's not going to connect right now just because I am indoors and my apartment complex is very dense. Um, so I'll have to walk outside, get it to connect. This GPS module also has a capability that if you install a coin cell on the bottom side, it will maintain a, um, a lock to the timing sequences for GPS or whatever they're called. So it allows it to sync up faster next time you request an, an update and it'll give you the longitude and latitude. I'll show you guys a little bit of the code later on. One thing I did not mention is this black strip here is actually the LTE antenna that uses AT&T's network to communicate back with the particle servers. Um, so I think uh, I'm paying about three bucks a month for a few megabytes of data. There is a Wi-Fi option, but I wanted this to be able to work almost anywhere. So three bucks a month, you know, if you guys hit the like and subscribe button, maybe eventually this video will pay for that. So we'll see. After I confirmed everything was working on my breadboard, I went ahead and cut a piece of proto board to size. Uh, that I was going to put inside the enclosure box that I got off of eBay. These are like a dollar a piece. They're little generic plastic boxes. And I installed some female headers onto it. Uh, the boron and the GPS module are going to be mounted to this in a non-permanent way so that I can reuse them if I have to in the future for other projects. I did do some kind of layout work that's not shown on the video of uh, just how I wanted to fit everything together. So the battery is going to slide underneath the GPS module and then I left some space in between the boron and the module um, for all my wires are going to interconnect the two boards together. Next up was the switch. I decided to wire this directly to the battery. Uh, this would ensure no uh, discharging was happening with the battery, even if it was still plugged in to the boron. So all I did was disconnect the, or cut the positive side wire of the battery and wire a switch uh, in line with that, uh, as you can see here. And then I just uh, soldered the two wires back together and put some electrical tape over it. 
Next up, I took this LED and I just wired a resistor to the bottom side of it. I hooked this up to the ground side. I think it was like 23 or 27 ohms, I can't remember. Uh, but you can see the color bands on there if you really want to check. I'll probably put a bomb list down below. Um, so yeah, just put it like this and then some heat shrink over it. And then finally, one of the last parts that unfortunately I did not record was actually cutting the holes out of the enclosure box. Um, it was really easy. It was three holes. One was for the switch, one was for the LED, and one was for the USB rechargeable port. That's actually the same port that's on the particle boron uh, since it does have battery charging capability. And you can pretty much hook up any battery to it, which was a really good thing. Um, like I said in the beginning, this project was really easy to build physically. Um, and even the code. Um, so here, let's transition over to that and I'll show you. Okay, so looking at the code, I did borrow it from, well, I did reference a lot of it from this uh, other project. Uh, from Scott Hatfield, he used this uh, same hardware to track a GPS to track a drone using a GPS in case he ever lost it. Um, my modifications were very minimal to it. Um, it's really based on the Adafruit GPS library, and then other than that, I mean, it, it's almost like the the app notes for it. All, all I did was change the wording and um, the text that it outputs to the console so I declared of course the LED <clears throat> excuse me the the first thing it does when it boots up is there's going to be a notification that's going to say tracker engaged uh, GPS communication is going to begin and then it's going to go through a list of commands uh, to begin the GPS um, searching range and try to find a, um, a GPS lock then it's going to blink the LED once um, for a second just to make sure that it's on uh, you can look through the battery th through the USB port and see if it's on But I just want to make sure that it boots it up when you hit the on switch it boots up and it blinks the LED for a second uh, Then going on to the main loop You can see here uh, we define the GPS characters and then we have some timing sequences This is all based off the GPS library. I don't want to get too much into this so some of you guys uh, probably aren't that interested in it anyways uh, but if you want I can send you a copy of the code or show you where to get it um, so basically if the GPS signal is fixed <clears throat> it will publish the last location and then your GPS latitude coordinates and then your longitude coordinates um, it'll blink the LED for half a second uh, or you know turn it on turn it off for half seconds will blink it and then if there is no GPS signal lock then it will just publish a uh, GPS lost and this will loop in a circle as long as a thing is powered on um, where you change your refresh rate would be in this timer here so right now it's set for every minute um, so every minute if there's a GPS lock it'll send me the coordinates and if it's not it'll publish GPS lock every uh, every GPS lost every minute. This is what the data looks like when it's coming in and it finally has a, a lock. So you basically get two sets of coordinates, your longitude and latitude. And then from there, you can just go ahead and copy and paste that into Google Maps. So anyways, that's it guys. Pretty straightforward build, like I said, and the code's really simplified too. Um, you know, big credit to Scott there that made the GPS drone tracker. A lot of it was based on that. And the modules and the hardware, they were pretty much off the shelf. So I hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching.